It's 1941. The Nazi war machine rolls across Europe, powered onwards by overwhelming superiority in the air. Aircraft the U.S. cannot match. U.S. Army Air Corps was woefully behind the European powers in terms of performance, particularly with fighter aircraft. For instance, the German BF-109, which was much faster and much more maneuverable. The U.S. needs a new breed of fighter to tackle the Luftwaffe, and they need it right now. There's no time to create one from scratch. Some of the parameters that they were looking at were aircraft that could fly higher, in particular, maintain their performance at higher altitude. In a dogfight, height is all important. The top dog swoops down, kills, and climbs back out of danger. Pressed for engines with power to climb high, the Republic Aviation Company comes up with a radical solution. It adapts an engine it's already developing, an engine similar to those powering some U.S. bombers, the Pratt & Whitney R2800 Double Wasp Radio. It may be enormous, but testing proves that the Double Wasp on its own isn't the answer for the new high-flying fighter the U.S. needs. Reaching heights of 25,000 feet would leave the Double Wasp gasping for air. So one can think of an engine something like us. It has to have oxygen to breathe, if you will, to burn. And just like we are, we can't be at high altitude without having some kind of supplemental oxygen. There's only one solution if the U.S. is to get the high-flying fighter it desperately needs. The Double Wasp engine needs a turbo supercharger. The turbo sucks in air, compresses it, then removes excess heat in an intercooler before it's force-fed into the engine. Extra oxygen forced into the cylinders allows fuel to burn at a faster rate. The end result? More power when the plane is flying high. The designers now have a big engine to use in a big fighter, packing the punch of a heavyweight. So the P-47 ended up being this really monstrous single-seat fighter. It dwarfs existing fighters, the German Messerschmitt, the Japanese Zero, the British Spitfire. December 1942, the first P-47s arrive in Europe, taking the fight to Germany. German Air Force didn't really know what to think about the P-47 when it first appeared in the skies, but the Germans learned very quickly over the course of the war, more than 15,000 Thunderbolts enter the fray. German air power meets its match. 